when we're looking at our data view, for example, this is this is what we're working on here, where we tick on and off different layers. Um, if we actually want to create a map that we want to print out of that, usually we add different elements like a, a legend, scale bar, that sort of thing. And we do that through the layout view. Okay, So these two little buttons down in the bottom left of your screen here, one says data view and one says layout view. And if when I switch to the layout view, also keep an eye on this toolbar up the top here, which, which at the moment is grayed out, and these are my layout tools. But as I click on the layout view, you'll see that these tools become available for me. And these are a bunch of zooming and panning tools. So what we'll see is we've got, we've got the same data that, that we've already set up, um, that we've already ticked on over in our table of contents. Um, and now the layout is essentially going to put that on a page for us. Now, it's quite useful to get used to using these different zooming and panning tools and understanding the difference between them and the zooming and panning tools that you have available for your data view. So let's have a look first of all, and we'll click on this, this button here which says zoom to a whole page. And you'll see that the first black outline that we've got there is the page that we're going to print on. So that might be an A4, for example. Um, and then by default, we've got our we've got the the layers that we've switched on, and but by default, it's also put a little border around our map layer there. Now this is a dynamic view, so I can switch on any individual layer that I like, um, and that will also appear in my layout view. Okay, so again, anything I switch on or switch off, for that matter, will appear and disappear in the layout view. What I can also do is if I decide that, for example, I just want um, Australia to be shown on my layout, well then I would use the data view zooming tools, so this plus, to zoom into Australia there. And you'll see I've still got my full page, okay, that I'm using in the layout. Um, but this time all I've zoomed in is the data that I'm going to present on that layout, okay. I'll go back to the, the full data extent there. Now just having a look at the difference between the zoom in tool from the data view and the zoom in tool from the layout view. So if I click on the zoom in tool from the layout view, for example, and I zoomed in, in and around to Australia, what you'll see is that the actual position on the page changes. Okay, So I zoom in and around Australia and what all I've changed is the, the amount of area that I would be able to see in terms of the printout. Okay, So you can still see that I've got just the edges of my page um, on this right hand side here. And again I can also pan and I will move around that particular printout area. Okay, But it doesn't actually change the amount of information that's going to be printed on that particular map. So if I zoom back out again, you'll see that I've still got that full page and the full data view there. So just practice those zooming and panning tools a little bit to get used to that. Now the quickest and easiest way to add the elements that you require into the map is just simply to go to Insert. Um, and you can add a bunch of different things here. So you can simply insert a title, a legend, a north arrow, etc. So if we go to Insert a legend, for example, it's going to ask me which layers I would like to include in my legend. All right, And this will change um, as you tick on and off different layers at the moment. So it's automatically saying, OK, well, I'll include the earthquakes, the plates, and this world image, because that's what I've got ticked on in the table of contents. So say I might just remove the world image. So if I just click on that there and click on the arrow to send it back to the left-hand side, this will say I'm, I'm creating a map that's going to have a legend with both the earthquakes and the tectonic plates in the legend. And you can click Next and change any of these options that you like. So you might want to change the title for the legend, the, the text, um, colour, font, etc. I'm just going to accept everything as I go through, but it's up to you guys to also have a look and experiment with some of those things. And what you'll see there is now if I, if I use the layout tool to zoom into the legend, for example, you'll see that it shows exactly what you see in the table of contents there. Okay. 
And so this, this is dynamic in that, for example, if I don't like the, um, the title here that says earthquakes underscore GTEQ55, I want to make that a little bit, um, I, get, I guess, more useful for someone who's reading your map. Um, if I just single click on it in the table of contents, you'll see that I now have the ability to change what's written there. Um, so I might write earthquakes greater than 5.5 on Richter scale to give a bit more information and just click off that and you'll see that it automatically changes in the legend as well. Okay. And if I was to change any colours in my, in my earthquake depiction, that would also automatically change in my legend. Okay, so the only thing that, doesn't, that won't be automatically updated is if, if I add something else on. So say I've now decided, oh, actually I would really like to add global volcanoes into my, into my map here. It doesn't actually appear automatically in the legend, but we can make it appear. So if we use the black arrow tool, and we left click on our legend and go all the way down to properties just off the screen there you can always come in and change what you're showing there so I sh should perhaps add global volcanoes put that over to the right hand side and click OK and you'll see I've now got global volcanoes on my on my list in the legend there